Welcome to this week's edition of Library Picker. Today we're going to hit five books, four pretty cool covers, and two authors. So let's get started in our action and suspense area. And you know, we've had a week, week and a half of some really great weather. 60s, 70 degrees outside, no snow. But to remind you of the winter weather we had last month, we're going to pick a book called Trapped. Now I know you all will recognize this. Good morning. This is a message from the communications office at MICDS. Due to the winter storm, MICDS will be closed today, Thursday, January 20th, 2011. This book is about kids who did not get that call. They've gone to school, and the storm is much bigger than anyone could have imagined. It lasts more than a week, and they're stuck in this school. It's a couple guys, a few girls, and maybe a teacher or two. Um, eventually the lights go out, the heat goes out, the water stops working, so this is a survival thriller and it's in our action and suspense area. Next book we're going to try out is in our classic section, and I don't know about you, but I'm getting really excited about the baseball season. Despite all the talk about injuries and contract negotiations, this book, Shoeless Joe, is about America's pastime and how it fits into uh, the history of this country. It was made into a movie in 1989. Here's part of the trailer. Daddy, there's a man out there on your lawn. Are you a ghost? What do you think? You look real to me. Sometimes, when you believe the impossible, the incredible comes true. Field of Dreams. So this isn't just a book about baseball. It's also about having a dream, following that dream, even when people think you're crazy. This is in our classic shelf, and we also have a copy in our grab-and-go area. Next book, I want to head over to Sci-Fi and Fantasy. New book just came out, um, and it's on this shelf with all these other great new books. It's called Across the Universe. This is about hundreds or thousands of people that are leaving Earth in order to colonize another planet. I'm going to switch over to the book's website and you can get a look at the, the spaceship. Anyway, this is like a 300-year journey, so most of the people are cryogenically frozen and they'll be awakened when they get to this planet. Um, this is a great website. You can take a look at the ship. You can see how they do their farming, greenhouses, where they live, stuff like that. Um, but the story's about one girl who gets woken up, unfrozen, 50 years early, and it turns out someone tried to murder her. So she's now aboard this ship, and everybody, almost everybody else is asleep, and she has to figure out who she can trust. It's a great sci-fi uh, fantasy book. The interesting thing is, this is a book with two covers. So we're going to pick this book up and head over to the drama and comedy section, where there's another copy of this book. And on the reverse of the cover is a completely different cover. Take a look at it. Now, why would a publishing company want to do this? Well, they want the book to appeal to two different kinds of readers. On the right, you have people who are really interested in sci-fi, and on the left, you have a cover that appeals to people who are interested in drama and romance, because there's a certain amount of that in the book, too. So, it's just a way to um, attract more than one type of reader. We actually have another book that's similar in that it has two different covers the publisher has decided to include, and it's also in our drama and comedy section. It's called... Delirium by Lauren Oliver. Let's hear what the author has to say about her book and how she came up with the idea for the book. The idea for Delirium came after I read a Gabriel Garcia Marquez essay in which he was talking about the fact that, you know, all good books kind of are about two central themes, death and love. So the next day I went to the gym and it was during one of these big panics over swine flu or bird flu. I no longer remember what it was. And I was on the treadmill and I was running and I was thinking about that, you know, quote by Gabriel Garcia Marquez and I was thinking about love, 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 love. And I was also watching this news report of this panic, this flu epidemic. And I was thinking, wow, it's so weird how people just go into panics about these diseases. I mean, you could basically make it people believe that anything was a disease. I mean, you could even make a love, 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 love. And it was like my two hemispheres, like the ideas got collided and I was so the idea she had was love is a disease. And in this like alternate future United States, 
the government said outlaws love. And when you turn 18, you have to have a brain surgery that removes something that makes you catch this love virus. So this is about one girl who realizes that this might not be a good idea, and she kind of fights back. Two different covers. Again, someone like me might not pick up the cover on the right, but I would definitely pick up the cover on the left. Either way, it's a great story. So while we do judge books by their covers, the stories inside them are the same. So um, if either of these two books sounds good, don't be put off by the cover. Let's look at one more on this same shelf after we put that across the universe back. It's called The Fourth Stall. Now I just said don't judge a book by its cover, but this cover is really cool. And the reviews say that this is a mix between Diary of a Wimpy Kid and The Godfather. And the cover is based off of The Godfather books. Here's part of one of those reviews. Need something? Test answers? A hall pass? A doctor's note? Or a video game? Mac can get it for you. Just come to his office, the fourth stall from the high window in the East Wing boys' bathroom. He's only a sixth grader, but he owns this school, at least until legendary bad guy Staples shows up with his henchman, The Collector. Let's hear what the author has to say in an interview where he's asked, what things would you bring with you if you were going on an adventure? The first thing I bring with me is a lighter, for obvious reasons. You need to make fire to stay warm or for light or to cook things. The second thing I bring with me is a textbook. And, you know, not because it's important to know geography in an adventure situation or because I want to do math for fun or anything, but because there is an awful lot of paper in textbooks that you can burn should you be stuck in the Arctic or the desert, someplace where there's not a lot of things to burn. Um, the next thing I bring with me is, is one of these. Now, if you can get yourself one of these, um, they're good because, first, they're a good companionship. So this author, uh, I mean, take a, take a look at his differences between his facial hair. We've got chops, you've got full beard, you've got kind of a Fu Manchu goatee, you've got no beard. This author is a funny, interesting character, and there are funny, interesting characters in this book, but there's also a little bit of a mystery thrown in. I'm going to grab this other copy of Across the Universe and go put it back in our sci-fi and fantasy section, but that's it for this week's episode of Library Picker. Hope you have a great weekend.